Some of you know me, uh, some of you uh, don't. Um, uh, as Andy said, I, I manage a, a team of, uh, of quarry inspectors throughout uh, GB. Um, we're responsible for uh, for regulating uh, the the legislation as it applies to to quarrying, including the uh, the open cast coal. Um, I've tried to to tailor what I talk about uh, today um, as much as possible um, around general themes, which um, I would imagine that the majority of people here are uh, from the uh, the quarry industry or associated with it. But I think the the messages of it, uh, I. I hope um, will strike a chord, regardless of what uh, what industry uh, you're uh, you're involved in. It was slightly optimistic, expecting me to be able to. Uh, there we go. Right. Um, if I can just talk about uh, what I see as the challenges um, to uh, to begin with um, but the, the the problem and the uh, the challenges that we uh, we face these are the um, the statistics for uh, the quarry industry going uh, back to around about the year 2000 uh, so fairly representative but what we can see obviously is uh, the dramatic uh, reduction in uh, in accident numbers that we have uh, have seen. Um, these are not frequency rates. These are um, numbers of RIDOR reported. And because of the, the sort of the crude systems that, uh, or relatively crude, that HSC operates, we can only really go on accidents reported to us. So, I mean, what is clear from that is the the long way that the industry has um, has come. There are a few buts as you would expect. Um, and if you look at the, the trend from about 2008 onwards, uh, you see that we've actually achieved a flat line. Um, and it's that, what we do about that really, that I would like to, uh, to talk about uh, today. Because that has to be a concern to all of us. If you bear in mind that um, every point on that, uh, that graph, every one of those hundreds, uh, averaging around about 100 there for the last, uh, last few years. Every one of those is someone we know um, who possibly has, has suffered a life-changing uh, injury. Um, we've probably been for a drink with them. Um, we probably know their families. Um, we know their kids' names. Um, we work with them. Uh, they're not just points on a on graph. They are the people that we go and, uh, and work with uh, every day. So every one of those is, uh, is important. And unfortunately, in my work, I get to, to speak to uh, a lot of people who represent those points on the, uh, the graph. And you just see how, how much their life has changed as a result of some of these accidents. The other point to bear in mind, uh, and I will cover it uh, uh, later, is that that doesn't represent ill health. Uh, and ill health is, uh, is really an issue that we need to uh, lock onto and do something uh, about because uh, behind uh, those figures is an even bigger picture in terms of uh, people who are suffering uh, ill health. Uh, it's probably even worse than that actually because around about uh, 2012 RIDOR changed from three, that three day to seven day reporting so uh, you know, the, the numbers are, um, you, you can't allow for that, you can't make an adjustment for that. So the, the numbers are certainly worse than uh, uh, they appear there. Don't forget also that 2008-2009, um, um, up to 2010-11, you know, uh, the industry went through a huge decline. Uh, the, uh, as much as 30% uh, of the capacity was taken out of the, uh, the industry, so a lot of people went with that. So those figures are against a background of reduced capacity. A lot of people left the industry, and that's a concern too, because many of the people who left were more than likely the people who were responsible for that, uh, that steep decline in the, uh, the early years from 2000. Um, and I hate to say it, looking around, uh, we're not getting any younger, are we? So um, we've got to look to, to the younger generation to continue that uh, uh, that decline, because many of the people who brought about that decline, as I say, are no longer in the industry, and that has to be uh, a concern for us. So it's it's a bit of a double-edged sword. We, we've got to recognise what we've achieved, uh, and it has achieved. I mean, it, it's so different from what I remember 
of, uh, of the industry, A, when I worked, into, worked in it, and B, uh, since I joined HSE. But uh, there's that plateau that we need to do something about. Very quickly show you that. The, the only point I would make on that is, is that in 14 and 15, um, we did have this fatality free year, which is a huge achievement. Um, sadly, that has not been uh, continued. We have had uh, a fatal accident in a quarry this year. Um, but if you take it as numbers employed, um, the, you're 11 times more likely to die in or be killed in, uh, in a quarry. Um, than you are in, in all industry taken together. Uh, and we think of construction as being uh, a, a high risk industry. Um, quarrying if, if, if applied as a, as a rate, um, but numbers employed. Uh, quarrying is, is twice as likely to be killed in a, in a quarry as on a construction site, which is pretty shocking figures, uh, uh, really. So that, that's the only point I'd like to make on that, except to say that. When you have an accident in, uh, in a quarry, it appears to me, um, based on the numbers of majors weighed against the, the total number of riddles, which includes the miners, uh, the chances are it's going to be a serious accident. It's heavy kit, that's maybe not a surprise. That's our strategy. Um, HSE's uh, strategy, it's, it's actually due for um, a refresh. It was our strategy from 2010 to 2015. There's just three elements that I'd like to, uh, to pick up from, uh, from that, because I think this is where the answer lies to that tailing off in the uh, improvement uh, rate. Strong leadership building competence and involving the, the workforce. Now, I wasn't here yesterday, um, but I've already picked up that those were some of the messages that were, uh, were given out yesterday. And I know uh, from some of the other slides I've seen on here that that's going to be the theme today. So I'm not, I'm not alone in, uh, in that thinking. Um, this is where we need to focus our, uh, our efforts. There is nothing new in, uh, in health and safety, let me tell you. Um, uh, we don't need more and more complex systems to, uh, to manage health and safety. Innovation, I'm not sure there's a great deal that, uh, uh, of innovation in, in terms of what is causing the accident. I mean, let's face it, gravity never fails, does it? Um, that, that's one constant in the, uh, the universe. And, and yet, um, you know, slips, trips and falls, falls from height, um, they continue. Uh, so, innovation is not going to help us uh, there. I think it comes back to, to this, uh, these basic three building blocks and, uh, and getting those right. That, that's my opinion. You can, you can contradict me if, uh, if you wish, and, I, and I'm more than, uh, uh, well, I, I'm up for the, uh, the challenge, let me tell you. I'm here for, uh, for the majority of the, the day, I'm up for that, uh, that challenge. I'd like to talk a bit later about um, what uh, is coming in terms of the, uh, the new refreshed and relaunched strategy, which is an increased focus on strategic par partnerships and an increased focus on, uh, on health. But for now, uh, if I can deal with, uh, with that, just um, as you would expect, uh, the, the HSE strategy is then mirrored into the, the quarries sector strategy, which I'm responsible for, uh, for writing, um, which is available on the, the internet, I believe. Uh, so those key themes are um, continued through into that. The avoiding catastrophe at the bottom uh, there is simply that we have to recognise that uh, as an industry, we manage some, some pretty significant risks in terms of uh, the amount of explosives that is used in, uh, in quarries. Um, and, um, the, uh, the tips and stability issues that we're responsible for, uh, for managing. If we're going to have a Bosley mill, the, uh, the wood mill in Cheshire that, uh, that caught fire, uh, or an Alton Towers, it's going to be one of those uh, issues, and it's really going to grab the, uh, the headlines. Um, so we can never take our sight off, uh, off those, and that, that uh, is why, it, uh, why it's in there. They're sort of high hazard, low probability, but they are the, uh, the headline grabbers. So, leadership. 
I hope you would uh, agree with, uh, with that. And I think it's that bit at the bottom, isn't it? Um, it's the way we do business uh, around here that we're, we're all trying to, um, uh, to aim for. But a leader can be anyone. Um, it, it's not the, uh, it doesn't have to be the, the manager of the, uh, the quarry. Leadership exists at, uh, at every level. If they satisfy those criteria, um, then they are uh, our leaders. And we've got to recognise them and, as an industry, nurture them and, uh, and give them the, uh, the opportunities that, that they need to drive cultural change. I mean, for example, who's delivering our, our toolbox talks? Is it a foreman, because they're the foreman, or is it someone who's got a real flair for, uh, for that and that people will, will listen to uh, and uh, take something uh, from it? And, and if it is, um, then you know, we ought to be devolving more authority to, uh, to them to lead the, uh, the industry, because everyone has got to, uh, to be a leader in some sense. Just add a bit of caution to, uh, to that. Think of the jam in the sandwich. The... Um, Within any workforce, you will have, um, say, 10% who are highly motivated right behind you uh, and you can rely on. There's sort of a floating 60% um, that can be led uh, and can be developed. There's, there's the 10% that you can do nothing with. Um, and and that, the numbers will vary, but every workforce will be made up of those. I think it's, uh, it's that... 60% or whatever it is in the middle that we need to be uh, aiming at and, uh, and leading them because um, uh, they can go either way, can't they? Uh, but we want to bring them on with, um, with us. If I can say something contentious now, um, I actually think the, the problem with leadership lies with middle management and frontline supervisors. I... I'm convinced that the, the board of the, the company, um, by and large, are committed to, to health and safety. Now, um, you may dis disagree with, uh, with that, but I think one of the problems that this industry and many other industries like it suffer from is this can-do mentality. Uh, it can be done, and it can be done at any cost. Uh, and that is the attitude on the, uh, the ground. The, the focus is very much on, we've got a problem, we've got to sort the problem, we can do this. Um, I don't actually think that what gets reported back to the, uh, the board is the, uh, the lost afternoon of uh, production on the, uh, the asphalt plant. I don't believe that's what... Uh, in a major, I, I don't think that, that's an e even uh, a decimal point on the, uh, the bottom line. I think what gets reported back is that at so-and-so location, there was a lost time injury. And I know it does. And, and so that, that tells me that, that the, the lost production, if there is any, um, I don't believe there is, personally, that uh, is done from rushing in with, with can-do. I don't think is, uh, is a feature of, uh, of this. I think it is about standing back from it and doing the job properly. And doing the, the job properly uh, involves a measure of uh, risk assessment and uh, consideration of, uh, of health and safety. That, that 20 minutes spent in planning a job, um, you know what they say about planning and uh, etc., cetera, um, uh, is so essential. I think that's, that's, uh, that's where it gets uh, missed a bit. And um, perhaps the, if we could, instead of saying we can do this, if we, could, if we could say we can do this, and what's more, we can do this safely, uh, I think that is the, uh, the, the attitude that we need to, uh, to adopt. I recall um, investigating um, an incident on uh, a steelworks that um, resulted in, uh, in quite a serious uh, incident. And to, to give me an idea of what had led up to it, I read all the shift reports for the, the previous week. Um, 
the team leaders at the end of the shift produced a, a report and they listed what had happened. Well, there was one in, in particular, um, one team leader, who's quite a, a young chap, and his um, shift reports, they read like the, the damage reports the, to the, uh, the bridge of the Bismarck, because this was how, you know, it's heavy industry. They're running a blast furnace. Um, they're not making shoes or jam tarts. This was, uh, this was how it was. But amongst this, he signed off every report with routinely problematic. Uh, and that's how he saw it. He didn't see this as, this was nothing exceptional. Because uh, I questioned him about it, and he said, oh, that's how it is. Um, you know, we can't all work in an office. Um, this is how it is. It's routinely problematical. And I thought it was a good way of thinking about it, actually, because um, he didn't go into work expecting everything to go smoothly. He went into work expecting he would face problems. And what's more, he would face those problems, and he would have to deal with them safely. He'd have to deal with the problem, yes, but health and safety was a priority for, for him. And, and that formed part of his, his thinking, his, uh, his planning. That's the uh, sort of mentality I think we need to, to achieve. It's like the police must hear people saying, I didn't expect that red light to, uh, to change. Really? Um, you know, uh, that's what they do, isn't it? Um, so that's, when we go into work, I think that is the view that uh, we need to go into. Things will happen, things will go wrong, um, step back from it, deal with it, and deal with it uh, in, a, in a safe manner. We're not all <coughs> natural uh, leaders. Um, we never can be. However, the, the help is at hand. Um, HSC has produced uh, its, uh, its own uh, guidance there um, that uh, you can go to as a source of, uh, of information, um, and that will give you some starters. Quinjack also um, is, uh, you'll hear a lot more about uh, Quinjack later, but just to mention it now, that uh, there is guidance on there on, uh, uh, on leadership. Um, there's, there's an excellent self-assessment that you can, uh, can do, which is produced by actually from another industry, but is equally relevant as a starting point of, you know, where, I, where am I on the, uh, the leadership scale? Uh, what do I need to do to, uh, to improve? I'd recommend that, uh, that to you. So building competence. Again, I think this is... Uh, no one would disagree that uh, without a competent workforce, we, uh, we really don't stand a chance of, uh, of improving that, uh, that tail off on the, uh, the graph and making these places a place that we all want to work in and would want our families to, uh, to work in. Um, it, it's, it is a question of um, proportionate risk management. The, uh, the COSH assessments you see on TIPEX are actually an example of uh, incompetence. So for the purpose of this, just ignore the, uh, uh, the, the trivial. Um, the, the best approach is, is to, to map the competence of everyone who works for you, reports to you, uh, and identify the, the gaps and then fill those, uh, those gaps. And, and in filling those gaps, it, it, I don't, really don't think that... Um, uh, it's necessarily about uh, finding courses for uh, for people to uh, to go on. Uh, I think that um, there are a number of uh, of sources for for excellent um, toolbox talks. Safequarry.com is uh, uh, is a good good source. Quinjack is uh, is a good source. It's how you get those across then, and I think um, that we ought to make more use of um, pre-start brief, uh, pre-shift briefings, for uh, for example, uh, because that gives a powerful message that if uh, we're prepared to take time out of the, the day um, to give a 10-minute message of, uh, of, of that day and do it once a month. But I think there's a powerful message there, and it's increasing competence. Um, we're fortunate as, uh, as an industry also that I think we do have um, uh, one of the best suite of, uh, uh, of courses available to any industry from what I've, uh, I've seen. Um, uh, I'm talking about MPQC and the, the courses that are there and other course providers. I think 
as an industry, we couldn't want for, uh, for more. Um, but without that, uh, that competence, um, we stand very little uh, hope, I think. Again, um, I think that, that statement speaks for, uh, for itself. Wouldn't it be a fantastic situation uh, if the workforce managed health and safety for us? Um, I think it's achievable. But I don't think, as an industry, we're particularly good at it. Um, uh, and we need, perhaps this is one area where we need to, uh, to innovate and think about what we're, uh, we're doing. Because the traditional approach has been health and safety committees. Um, mm. And they work to a point, except that many people, I think, find that they're sort of co-opting people onto uh, health and safety committees because there's no willingness to, uh, to do it. Well, involving the workforce doesn't have to be a health and safety committee. Uh, involving the workforce can be simply going out, making time in your diary to, uh, to go out and actually stop someone on the job and say, look, stop, we're going to walk this, uh, this job or you're going to show me around your uh, machine and we're going to talk about health and safety while we do it. Um, because that will get back um, uh, to that, that jam in your, uh, your sandwich, if, uh, if you like, that, uh, you know, do you know what he did? Um, you know, we walked and listened to me. Um, the other key thing about that is that you do something about it, of course. Um, and even if that is, well, that's a good idea, um, but I, I don't see it working. Uh, I don't see it working for these reasons. Uh, that's feedback, but that's, that's useful feedback. Uh, just saying, you know, just doing nothing is, uh, uh, is not uh, an option. Um, one of the, the great successes that came out of the uh, London 2012 Olympics was they simply put a board up and it said, you said, we did. Um, and that was their way of giving feedback on, uh, on these matters. Um, so I think consider how you involve the, uh, the workforce. If it is a sterile um, health and safety committee that you, you call every six to eight weeks, whatever it is, um, uh, on a rainy day or when the plant is, uh, is broken down, is that really involving the, uh, the workforce? I mean, you've put a lot of money into training them. Um, they are the experts. They do the job day in, day out. Um, I think we must look at innovative ways to... to capture them and, and use what they, uh, they know. And there's talent out there, there's no question about it, um, that we need to, uh, to tap into as, uh, as an industry. Just to go back to this for, uh, for a moment. Um, I said that uh, the, the new strategy that HSC is launching is going to look at strategic partnerships and, uh, and increase emphasis on, uh, on health. Uh, we are extremely fortunate in, uh, in the quarry industry that we do already have a strategic partnership which is representative of the entire industry, whether that is um, uh, individual companies, trade associations, um, professional uh, bodies um, or the education uh, establishments. That already uh, exists. You'll hear a lot more about it uh, today, so I don't want to, to dwell on that. But um, it does need your support and it needs your, uh, your help. Uh, it's, it's setting out to produce industry guidance by industry for industry um, using industry recognised uh, experts and a number of them are in the, uh, the room today. Um, but it needs support and it, it, at the moment I feel it sadly lacks um, representative from the actual workers from the, uh, the quarry and I think that is something that needs to be uh, uh, address, but only you can uh, can address that. I can't co-opt people uh, onto it, but I do believe that there's development opportunities there for uh, employees of uh, of yours on uh, on Quinjack. I'm not going to say any more about Quinjack now because this, uh, that will come later. The other aspect of the um, uh, the strategy there was health. Uh, these are 2013-14 statistics. Um, it, a, a lot of it is, uh, is ba based on um, extrapolation of, uh, of figures. Don't ask me uh, how that is, uh, is done. That is, uh, is how it is, uh, is presented. Some big numbers uh, there. Um, you know, if you think that the, the sort of plateau at 100 riddors is uh, 
uh, is acceptable. Um, hopefully you don't. Um, you know, the, the numbers behind these are just huge. Um, and that has been, this, sorry. These are the figures for construction. You know, huge. I mean, that, that 100 to 1 has got to be uh, a real uh, concern. Um, I mean, quarry, the quarry industry is not going to be identical to that, obviously. And, I mean, the, obviously, the big one in, uh, in construction is always going to be uh, asbestos. Um, however, um, uh, we do have a lot of uh, silica in, uh, in quarries, and I don't think we, that we've, uh, we've really seen um, uh, the effects that that is going to have uh, long term yet. Um, Interestingly, that picture on the uh, the right there is uh, of a quarry. Um, it doesn't matter where it is or whose it is, but the the reason that it looks a bit misty is that because that is crystalline silica hanging in the air that's caught in the uh, the camera flash there. Uh, so to to try and say we don't have a problem um, in terms of health, I think would be misguided. Um, and there is a long way to go. Um, these were taken this month. Um, you can see down in the, the bottom corner uh, there, I'm quite happy to run an excavator with uh, a window missing from it. The driver had reported the, uh, the window uh, missing um, for um, a number of weeks, actually. Um, that was the state of the, the cab in that, that vehicle. Uh, and this was um, another vehicle on the, on the same site. I could have taken those photographs when I first joined HSE over 20 years ago. Um, so it, it's, you know, it, it must sadden all of us that, you know, in terms of health, um, that's how little progress we have uh, uh, have made, and we've really, really got to push on uh, on this one. And I will be playing my part in that, uh, as you would uh, would expect. So, what can, uh, what can we do about this? Um, well, I think first and foremost um, is go out and, uh, and lead and develop the, the leaders within our organisations. Uh, there's, um, there's a huge supply chain there that you can, uh, can influence. You can influence much smaller uh, employees as well as larger uh, employees. Learning and sharing, there are plenty of opportunities for that. Quinjack is just uh, just one of them. Safe Quarry is, uh, is another through incident uh, alerts. And taking the initiative, not standing back and letting someone else do it, um, <coughs> taking the initiative as the, the leader, getting in there, getting stuck in and doing it. And I don't think we need um, more and more complex procedures. What we need is uh, is action and an outcome. So what are the, the outcomes that uh, we're expecting? And then the, lastly, I borrowed that line off um, uh, Peter Baker, who spoke yesterday, and I think it's absolutely right. Who cares wins? Um, you know, we, uh, we work in uh, quite a male-dominated um, machismo <laughs> industry where we'd like to think who dares wins. Well, perhaps we ought to change that slightly and think, well, actually, no, who cares um, wins? And with that, um, I, will, uh, I will finish. Um, I don't think there was uh, time built in for, uh, for questions, but I will be here for, for most of the day. And I'm, uh, you know, I am approachable. Um, you can come and, uh, and talk to me, and I'd be happy to, uh, to answer questions. But I hopefully I've left you with something to, uh, to think about. And uh, I'm very grateful for the, uh, the invitation and the, the opportunity. Thank you.